kidding me? You can't Niba? So you pretty much flow with the goal. I come to the right place then. <laughs> Post Rolls Jiu Jitsu Podcast. Welcome to the Post Rolls Podcast. I'm Miles. This is Nick. We have in the house Javier Showtime Vasquez. It's an honor to have you here, sir. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for coming down from L.A. and rolling with us today. Yeah, thank that, you guys for having me. Man, thank you. That, that meant a lot. So uh, that's the point of this podcast. We like to roll a little bit and then uh, and then chat about what's interesting. And you've had a, a super interesting career. And now you are delivering uh, jujitsu information in, in a super cool way. And so I'm excited to talk about that along with uh, along with a few other things. So yeah, thanks again for being here. And we got two King of the Cage champions here. I'm surrounded by oh, really? King of the Cage champions. And you I'm... for King of the Cage? <laughs> I was their first champion. Really? Dang, number oh, one. That's cool. All right. That's cool. I'm just a butt scooting jujitsu guy that doesn't like to get punched in the face. So uh, <laughs> it's my it's my honor to be here with you guys. <laughs> um, that's uh, it. It changed a lot from when I was the champ it was much cooler when when, <laughs> when you were in there in the beginning <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was much cooler um, yeah it was wild it was wild that was a wild time yeah like was everybody it? was coming through everybody was fighting on that show yeah shamrock uh, right, yeah like sakuraba fought on that show once yeah really uh, everybody fought dean, on lister? That show. dean lister dean lister from down i was show. under dean down here rampage I mean, rampage, rampage was, was, yeah, yeah. On that show. everybody fought mm-hmm. on that show yeah everybody. rampage was just on rogan anybody watched the rampage on rogan yet no no oh, i can't wait to hear king it. of the cage eventually just like devolved into uh uh terry just putting shows where he wanted to go on vacation mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and they would just be like more or less yeah yeah <laughs> they'd be like oh we're having a show in uh in thailand now oh really why <laughs> yeah, why go to thailand <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there um, was a, there was a time where we were competing to be like the best show right the feeder we, we, yeah we we well e- even competing with the ufc because back oh, really? in the day the ufc was only having a few shows a year that's true and, yeah and terry was trying to make relationships with guys in japan mm. um that's how he was able to get all the pride guys to start coming over and fighting so and when i was champion jens pulver was champion of the ufc so i would have loved to have that fight were you the 145 champ 155 55 but wait a minute you fought jens pulver i fought him i fought him 10 years later oh okay okay Right on. Yeah. Oh, you, to unify the belts? That would be, that would be sick. <laughs> I, I, I always thought that I would. I was a bad style matcher for that guy. Really? Yeah. You, know? you beat him, right? I did. Yeah? Nice. Ten. So you were right. It only took 10 years to prove it. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically. Why, why did you think you were, uh, like, w- what about your style and his style that you thought was in your favor? He wasn't going to be able to stop me from taking him down at some point. Yeah, yeah. And I thought my jiu-jitsu was far better. Yeah. So... It wasn't just like you're going to get back up. It wasn't just like, you know, you were going to take damage and get tired being underneath me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So um, in order for him to knock me out, he has to open up. And in order for him to open up, he's going to be off balance and I'll be able to get taken down. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to roll with you today. So you surprisingly hold the 300 pounds that you weigh. You surprisingly hold it well in your frame. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Can you do me a small favor? Can you... um, just kind of sit at the end of this table because I'm you're uh this boom is right in between you and I and I'm like trying to look at you but it's hard to there we go yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. that's much better there little we go. eye contact around here <laughs> we, we learned today I think it was you either if you have make eye contact with another man you either are going to make love or fight today we learned that is that, was that, that? That? <laughs> yeah, that was the Instagram post we were sharing no what you didn't share it no it wasn't you all no. right one of your other men well that's uh, that's what that's the case if you make <laughs> if you make eye contact you're either making love or you're fighting <laughs> that's right <laughs> oh. um well, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> now you're uncomfortable. We already fought. We don't have to make love That's anymore. That's true. That's true. Jeez, we did. just relax. We did. <laughs> I, uh, we were rolling today, and I uh, something was in deep half, and I was stuck under his crotch for quite a while. <laughs> and I, I popped up, got on top, and he was like, well, I'm going to need a plan B pill now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gross. <laughs> Part of what you just do is <laughs> you just got to take your mind somewhere where it's like no those aren't his balls in my face <laughs> for sure oh when they when you roll into class and it's like north south day you're like oh man <laughs> <laughs> it's never north south day in my day. <laughs> every wednesday is north south wednesdays <laughs> 
Um, so you you fought King of the Cage, uh, UFC. Did you fight Jens in the UFC? I fought him in the WEC. WEC, WEC, okay. WEC, WEC on top of that, and then ADCC too, huh? Yeah, I fought in Shudo. I fought everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so Pancrase and Shudo were they? They were similar. Or? They were similar, but they were kind of like kind of competing organizations. Shudo, mm. you can punch, and Pancrase, it was everything was like open hand. Open hand, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you, the boss you, rooting. Yeah. Days, right? Do you um do you remember so I heard a, a, a statistic that uh the WEC the size of the ring mm -hmm. was so much smaller mm -hmm. that uh that their the amount of knockouts they had like skyrocketed difference because it, of the UFC. <clears throat> I think that it's that that cage favors the grappler for sure. Mm -hmm. There's a smaller cage, you don't have to easier to kind of corner a guy. Really? And get yeah. That's it's, what I found with, about, King, I think, with King of the Cage. It was always nice because I always knew, like, we're going to clinch eventually. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like 10 feet smaller or something. King of the Cages. Uh, and WEC? WEC to the UFC was, I think, 10 feet smaller, 7 feet smaller. Yeah. So you think it favors the grappler and the striker? No, I think it favors the grappler. Hmm. Because if you're, like, trying to keep the guy away from you, right, you're trying to, like, just stay away bigger from their cage. grappling, you're going to run into each is better for, gra for strikers. Yeah, yeah. For strikers. But, but I mean, the, the statistic I heard was uh, more knockouts with a smaller cage. I mean, you're closer together. So. Maybe, yeah. maybe like, when there are two strikers, right? Then yeah. It's more likely that, you know, you're not going to play as much of a distance game. Mm -hmm. um, harder to, like, keep someone on the outside. Yeah, it's a smaller ring. Smaller yeah, yeah. cage. Yeah. What was your favorite organization to fight with? Um, I think the WEC and the UFC were, were basically the same. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they were the most organized. You yeah. Know. King of the Cages were crazy when I was fighting in it. <laughs> Why? So you were the first, cha one of the first champions yeah, they had? Yeah. How's the I was belt the first look? Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. respect. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I didn't do my research to, uh, <laughs> to, to know that. But that's yeah, awesome. it was crazy. That's when they were having all the shows outside, and some some oh, yeah, some days were right. freaking hot. <laughs> some days were raining, like the <laughs> studio. <sorry>. Yeah, <laughs> no, like, no, like keep, hot. Keep like, it hot. In like here. the mat was like 150 degrees hot. Was it really? Oh, really? Burned and stuff. The feet were burning. <laughs> yeah. Dang, really? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. What did when you uh, did uh, compete in ADCC? Were you still fighting? I don't know. Uh. I took I took some time off. I had I tore my ACL for the third time, so uh -huh. then I was taking some time off. And when I started to come back, I did ADCC in two thousand and uh, five. I won ADCC trials in two thousand five. Oh, you won trials? Yeah. Oh man, that's cool. I know. His, you that's gotta... the cooler way to get in. Yeah. I, think, I feel like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, the uh, here's a here's a, a a hotly debated thing. For myself, like uh, coming from MMA to and into jujitsu, it bothers me. When jujitsu guys call matches fights, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let them believe whatever they want to believe. <laughs> if, they, if you want to start standing up, you're going to get knocked out. If you're pulling guard on me, you're going to get kneed in the face. <laughs> so people be like, "Oh yeah, I fought him," and like, "Oh, did you? When? When no, did that happen?" You had matches. You had matches. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> listen, I think that there's a lot of things. A lot of la language is very important. Sorry. That was a gong. <laughs> Lang language, language is very important, and um, I'm ve I've been very selective with the language. Whether I say bypassing the legs and not passing the guard, or whether mm. um, uh, th th there's there's a lot of examples that the language kind of dictates your behavior a little bit. Sure. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and your decisions. It influences your decisions whether you want to believe it or not. So. Um, my jujitsu is always about being effective. Does it work? That's so all that matters. Strike-based jujitsu is your uh, is your system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. And that's uh, is it JV Jujitsu? You have like a cool short uh, website too. Yeah, <clears throat> JV Jujitsu is kind of like the branding, but uh -huh. um, I, I designed the system for rapid skill development. High levels of effectiveness, high levels of efficiency, and punch the fence throughout. So mm. whether we're wearing a gi, no gi, punches, no punches, it doesn't matter. We can roll by rolling the same way. We start to produce the same kind of behaviors on our opponents. Our behavior will dictate your behavior. So my question is, what causes ninety-five percent of all your problems in jujitsu? What body part causes ninety-five percent of all your problems? What opponent body part? What if we're yeah. rolling? 
what which part of your body causes me 95 percent of the problem causes uh the hands, hands right okay. i'd say hands the hands oh, so, hands, so okay. my whole entire system is designed Fucking around <laughs> controlling people's hands no, okay. you do have a lot of uh, wrist yeah, pins that with and wrist guy. control. I was yep. like, let go of my, so, go of my hands. Hit him. <laughs> hit him. I could tell. Hit me. Hit. Okay. Whether we roll with or without strikes, the result is the same. The, the result is you're not going to be able to hit me whether you think, like, oh, I'm going to turn it on right now and hit you. No, you're not. You're going to do the same thing that we are doing before. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to be better at it because now I can I can staple and hit you in between transitions. It's like a lot of C-clamps and stuff and double two-on-one. Do you do a lot of two-on-one? I, on I do two-on-one. I oh. optimize the control on the hand to maximize the 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 amount the effectiveness of the grip mm. um so what optimizing control causes higher levels of effectiveness and higher levels of efficiency so um i talk about the fatiguing mechanism there's ways to fatigue an opponent yeah um, you're relentless i told you when we were rolling it was just like yeah you're all over me <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's hard to get off the bottom. It's hard to get off the bottom. Yeah, There's, I'm gen I am able to generate tension. I'm able to generate anxiety from the top. There's a way to do it as well from the bottom. So even if you got on top and you still felt you were working. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's right, there's right. a there's a reason for it. Like you're able to do it from the top to the bottom through gravity. That's pretty easy. Most people can kind of get that. Mm -hmm. But from when you the way you're able to do it from the bottom to the top is to control the configuration, and um and also kind of by controlling the configuration using frames and angles um the opponent on top starts to counter by squeezing so now I'm, you're constantly squeezing to hang on to me well if you're squeezing and i'm framing yeah and we go three minutes four minutes i'm five tired minutes. before you mm -hmm. yeah yeah so did you hear that little like buzz mm -hmm. that's the ghost of helio gracie just comes back and blesses the podcast mm -hmm. when something interesting pops up yeah, just yeah. So you know so he's so, approved he approves yeah a lot no of he things. dug that <laughs> he was like yeah that's right keep it self-defense we're not yeah. about those points so when you roll your scroll, do you do like open hand uh, strikes? And yeah, stuff, we do. Or? We do MMA on Wednesdays, but yeah, I mean, whenever, whenever, whenever I want to, I can start hitting whenever. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, your students, like when your students are training, like do you, when you're teaching that and you go apply it live, or like, um, how do you do you simulate it in the sparring? Of course, nice. you have to. Yeah, yeah. There's sure. and there's drills like without having to hit the person. <clears throat> If I, if I can just touch your face, I don't have to even yeah. hit your face, but just the direction of mm. my hand going towards your face, mm. there's ways to deflect it. And, and it kind of builds muscle memory mm -hmm. to, to get you to understand how to stop that from happening, how to, how to stop their hands from reaching your face. And then most punches are looping anyway, so it makes it even easier to slip, swim your hand to the inside. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. we, we, aside from the, uh, the obvious things, like the obvious positions that you take out of sport jujitsu, What's the biggest thing that you feel like you have to change when striking is available in grappling? Uh, well, I, from the top or from the bottom? When you're on the bottom. When you're on the bottom, you have to be controlling the hands to the inside. Hand, inside control mm -hmm. is king. Mm -hmm. Manage the inside control, manage the distance, fill the space when the person starts to make space. I, I, my behavior from guard and side mount starts to generate an opponent behavior of... Um, <clears throat> Um, it's like, it's like a, uh, what do I, what do I call it, Nick? The, uh, when the person repellent behavior, mm. repellent behavior, I'm able to make you feel like getting off of me. My, if I, what, what I'm trying to do, I was telling Nick on the way here, what, what we've been able to figure out how to do is I'm able to kind of hack into your mind and make you feel like doing certain things. The certain things that you feel like doing are the same things that I want you to do. So I'm kind right, of right. tricking you into doing what I want you to do. So for example, if if you're on top of me in side mount and, and, and I say, ready, set, go, I gotta get out. If I start to push you, you naturally start to pull back. It's a kind of, it's the law of opposite reactions. Mm. If I go to push you, you're gonna kind of pull back. So when you're in that position, you don't have an angle to frame, your hands are kind of very compressed and they have gravity on their side the level of efficiency and effectiveness to try and push somebody off of you from side mount and bring the knee in. So now you're activating the central point. So now that's activated. So now you're burning there as well. Um, it, it's, it's all of these mechanisms kind of go against my advantage. It's more advantageous for the guy on top to, to, to just sit there and hold than it is for me to try to make this happen. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm able to make a configuration shift and bring my hands in front of your face, and I can frame on your neck on the magical spot, great, yeah, now I can kind of maintain a little bit of distance. But so long as I'm not able to do that, I'm kind of working against myself. So what I try to do from the bottom is I work my way from the inside out. I'm framing on the inside. I know that if you're 
arm is under my elbow, I'm stuck. Mm-hmm. But if I'm framing on your on your forearm, on hand, whatever. You say the magical spot. Is that your spot or we all have one? <laughs> we all have one. All right, we all, all have right. one. Nick's so, got one over there. We yeah. got Nick in the house too. Uh, one of your students is over yeah. here. Nick will, uh, vouch, Nick will vouch yeah. for my magic. Show me your magical spot, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> it's right here. It's right here. All right. All right. It, it's a, oh, it's, that's it, not what it, I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> See, that's not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Put that down. It's, it's, Sit it's, down. It's, it's a place where we can you can sustain weight. Okay. Like, for example, a lot of people come underneath the neck from the bottom to try to frame, and they end up framing kind of low on the wrist. Yeah, so there's no it's kind power of right here. frame. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's not oh, effective. You gotta... So if you frame yeah. it here, mm-hmm. it changes everything. Now mm-hmm, you're right. not having to hold with the amount of tension that it takes to maintain the weight is very little compared to the amount of tension and pressure I'm able to do it from here. Mm-hmm. So what happens is when I start framing and working my way from the inside out or working for the far side underhook what ten, or swimming the arm off the head, my behaviors start to make the person start to hang on. Well, if I'm framed and you're squeezing, but it's easy for me to hold this, and we do two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, it's a, it's a, it's a built-in fatiguing mechanism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So every exchange of energy, I want it to be in my benefit. So every exchange of energy, you notice you're exerting a whole lot and I'm not exerting a whole lot. Whether it's the optimized control, whether it's the unsustainable 45, whether it's controlling the inside knee, there's, there's, there's ways to prevent the legs from engaging in the battle. You felt that a little bit. It was just very not, difficult to put me back in guard. Yeah, not Nick's legs though. He kept getting his neck, his legs in. <laughs> I uh, we figured, I, fi- I figured out the, the solution to that little problem. Okay, okay. <laughs> very recently. He's not happy about it. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I figured out that little solution. But yeah. yeah, so there's multiple things that we can that we can do and I've kind of named these things. Um super cool. The unattainable angle like there's if you pass and you're in side mount, the legs are very close. The knee is very close to the hip, so you're you're within range to kind of get yourself back to guard. But if you circle mm-hmm. to where my weight is over one shoulder or the other, mm-hmm. it's the most difficult angle yeah. for you to get your legs. Your legs are as far away as possible right, right. to engage. So then what that starts to do is it starts to motivate you to do something. It starts to motivate you to... Turtle. You yeah. have to. Right, right. There's no chance. You have what are you gonna do? Stay in side mount? You mm-hmm. have guard. Guard is not I call guard the illusion of salvation. <laughs> oh, wow. Well you got some good uh yeah. Yeah naming so, behind stuff. Yeah, every everything is thought thought through because mm-hmm. if I can eliminate guard, if I, if there's a way that we can eliminate guard and most of it is based on just angle. Just the angle. Just the angle makes it unsustainable. Mm-hmm. You, you you can't reach where, you, where you're trying to get to. That creates a lot of fatigue because the guy's abs are activated, their hips are activated, their thighs sure. are activated. Yeah, yeah. I call that the, engaging the central point. So the longer I can keep that central point engaged by moving your knee, by rolling you over, by until you turn to turtle. Then when you turn to turtle, now my weight is on... The hips. Now it's on top of. So it. when you say mm-hmm. uh, engaging the central point, you mean you mean like like I'm I'm squeezing my core basically. Yes. Right. Like I'm I, like, I, I, I force you. To, I force you to squeeze your core. Now the the squeezing of the core is there's three substantial angles that we're dealing with, and 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 one common idea. The common idea is bringing the knee towards the shoulder. So if you think Mm -hmm. of the movement of bringing your knee towards your shoulder, we have a 90 degree, we have a 45 degree, and then we have a 45 degree on the positive side. Mm -hmm. Anything where the 45 degree is on on the inner side where you're stronger, you roll the guy away. You notice how I kept rolling you away? Mm. Every time that you get... Roll away, roll mm-hmm, away. Mm-hmm. So you're like, dude. Either I'm a you turn, either a you turn to your knees, or b you you you. I call it acceptance. You accept, and you just let me pass your guard and stay inside now. Mm-hmm. If the if 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 you get it to ninety, ninety is is a good place to engage, and then roll the, again, roll him away. Mm-hmm. If the knee is positive, now you're just pushing it down. Now it. Like now you're over the top of it, if that makes sense, if you're right, in the guard, right? Now they can't come back. Again, by stopping the knee from coming to the shoulder, it activates your abs, it activates your back, it activates your hips, it yeah. activates mm-hmm. your thighs, it activates, <laughs> it activates everything. And so long as I can keep that engagement going, it, it is just, They're just draining. Burning. It's, it's, their, a, it's a yeah. fatiguing their power, ball, their power bar yeah. is just... And, it's and, slowly and, just yeah. ticking down. Ultimately, like it's making it harder to breathe. 
right? Because I'm, so then, I'm so, like clinching. So then we get to the breath work. So let me share, let me explain to you the way this works. So whenever you pass somebody's guard, you you can take a rec- what I call a recovery breath. You can take mm. a deep breath in, you can breathe out, and you basically clear out your lungs. Maybe your breath is a little bit elevated after you pass the guard on. After top. you pass the guard, when you got on top, yeah, yeah, I call that a recovery breath. Okay, mm-hmm. right. So it's, it's a tension shift. I the tension shifted from me being on top and making you feel uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and then you finally got me off and then Uh you were able to take that right i call that a recovery breath okay that breath is not possible so long as you're under tension so long Mm -hmm. as you're so long as that central point is engaged Mm -hmm. you're under tension you can't you can regulate it Mm -hmm. you can sustain it for a little bit and and you have it's a bit of a mental exercise to dial in what's burning and then get rid of it through your breath or, or, or kind of do a little bit of an oxygen loading to load up the oxygen mm. for before you hit your scramble so you're able to sustain the scramble a little bit longer. But so long as I am able to keep my hands on you, my contact, my attention on mm. you, you can't clear mm. no matter what. You can't clear until you get that, comp- either A, you disengage, uh-huh. once the energy is broken, once the link is broken, you disengage and you uh-huh. face the guy, uh-huh. You can recover. Mm. If you go from top to bottom, that's a major tension shift. You mm-hmm. can recover. Sometimes it's as simple as, as framing the neck. You can recover. Sometimes mm. it's easy as Create getting some in the space. end. Depend, there's certain configuration shifts which cause tension shifts. but so And you're able to kind of slowly recover. So long as I keep you engaged, you can't clear it out. So mm. what tends to happen is... <clears throat> It just keeps building, building, building. And and it, there's a spot in your lung that you just can't clear. And it just keeps building, mm. building, 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 building. So what starts happening is your mind starts to think about that. Hey, I got to start going. So now you start to shift your mindset from being present, being calm, being rational, being reasonable, mm-hmm. to now you're reactive. Mm-hmm. Now you're chasing. Now you're scrambling. Now you're hustling. Now you're trying to kind of... Get to neutral. Now you feel like you're one negative one. You're not at zero. You're like a negative one. So now you're kind of trying to double pay. What do they call it? Double, 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 uh, double time, double time. Thank okay. you. The, the, you're trying to double time just to kind of Work get to harder. zero. Mm-hmm. And I just keep you there. Mm-hmm. And I just keep you there. So then what starts happening is you start going from reactive to absolute panic. Yeah. So what starts to happen from the top, is it better for me to finish you? If you're facing me or if you're facing away from me. Facing away. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. Right? Choke, choke it's not, it's, it, of course. Yeah. So my mechanism, my built-in mechanism, makes you do what I want you to do too. I want you to turn away. Mm. You're super happy to turn away because of what you're dealing with, the experience that you're, the internal experience that you're feeling in your mind, the dysregulation with the breath, the constant tension, the levering, the unsustainable 45, the unattainable angle, the constant, <laughs> all this, the, the, this, this. I want to turn away from all those things that you just said. That was so many things to put in my it's head. Over, it's overwhelming. <laughs> it's too much. It's, it's, yeah, it, it's such overwhelmed a, by all the, the terms you, you just used. So you've been a black belt for uh, 22 years, something like that? Yeah. That's wild, man. All right. And uh, under uh, Rodrigo Medeiros mm-hmm. uh, in San Diego, mm-hmm. one of the, the you said you the third black belt? Mm-hmm. Did it? Man, I think I was his third black belt. Respect to uh, to uh, Professor. Uh, uh, Rodrigo? Yeah, Rodrigo. Hey, he's Did you great. forget from the last No, he's a friend of... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's a friend of the podcast. He's coming on the podcast. Respect. What? Rodrigo yeah. did? Uh, no, he will. He will. Oh, he He's, will? Uh, yeah, Michael's setting it up for us. Michael yeah, yeah. Oh, for yeah, Rodri- yeah. Rodrigo's, yeah. Rodrigo's great. Yeah. They, yeah. He's super cool. That's cool. So, um, yeah, that's the, no wonder you have just stacks and stacks, encyclopedias of jujitsu knowledge uh, in your head. You know, um, I want to show you guys something. Sure, I'll show you guys. Let's go. This, this is this is kind this of your system. Th- this has kind of been the process. Um, this has been. I started. I wrote the sixteen books in in twenty eleven. I started. It took me four years to write the books. You wrote sixteen books. Yes. Um, the, I haven't even read sixteen books. <laughs> <laughs> so when I started Ooh. to put everything out, it looked like that. Hey, is there a way? Oh wait, am I actually? It's okay. There's. 
every kind of blue center was like a chapter. So chapter, so chapter one, chapter two. That's chapter the three. mind map of your system. That was the original mind map of the system. Okay. So, for, so most people said it's too much. It's too complicated. It's too much. If you look at a tree, it looks like the leaves. Everybody said that, by the way, not just most people. <laughs> and everybody said that. Everybody. Yeah. So, so then it was my job to kind of yeah. translate. Oh, Stephen Hilo Gracie said is that. Each, is each leg of this tree uh, a position? Yes, a positional chapter. They're, okay. they're all positional chapters. Cha uh, side mount top, side mount bottom. Right. It's, those are two chapters. Guard top, guard bottom. Those are two chapters. Uh -huh. Turtle top, turtle bottom. There's there's 18 total chapters from, from standing to ground. So then... Are those clickable? And those include striking they, too, right? No, they're not clickable, but but that was the idea, to click on the move and it sends you to it. Right, yeah. right. Too complicated. <laughs> you so then I came up with version 2.0 and I kind of grouped things together. I kind of simplified things. I still kind of like a circle. If you really know what you're looking at, it's a circle. This was fundamentals, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, ta, 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 ta. Mm -hmm. What do you see? Too much. It's too, too complicated. Yeah, this is some beautiful mind stuff. This so, is like th that, that, this type of like jujitsu nerd stuff excites me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna Miles, love this is like this is too much for me to yeah. think about. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make it simple for Miles right now. Okay, thank you. So <laughs> version, I don't like his huge jujitsu no, boner. It was too much. It, it too. was too overwhelming. It was too yeah. much for people to to absorb. And my goal was again rapid school development. How can I make you good fast? Yeah, that's what I was gonna get right. to. So, the, what I start what this is what I came up with. The first thing I started with was JVOS, which is a mindset. We discuss breath work, we discuss strategy, we discuss fatigue generation, we discuss um, basically strategies and concepts that are invisible. Oh, but, okay. But, but um, relentless persistence, there's just a bunch of them. There's the breath work, there's the mind work, there's regulating your breath, there's like, it's a pretty extensive system. It was like seven hours. So mm -hmm. the first part is the mindset. Let me get you slowly to think in the way that we're thinking, in a simplistic way. Don't just think moves. Forget about moves. Moves don't. Moves are useless because if you have to, if if you're in a fight, you got to go. Look up the move. Look up the chapter. Look up what you want. <laughs> and by the time you go through all that processing to get to that move, it's gone. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. too much processing for the individual, so it doesn't work. So I started off with the mindset first, and I said, wait a minute, now, there's really four positions that we're dealing with, standing, chest to back, chest to chest, and supplemental. That's it. Okay. So yep. Now so, I'm in. <laughs> I'm back in. So, so, so that's it. So, so, standing is my language. <laughs> so standing is broken up into, into striking and takedowns, okay. both offense and defense. Uh -huh. And those have their own central path. There's a way I strike to get to the clinch, to get to your legs, to get to the top. Uh -huh. These are sexy graphics too. Where where can uh, people find these? Can they? Uh, yeah. th th this graphic right here is on uh, jvjujitsuonline.com. Okay. So then we go to chest to back. Now chest to back is one position. It's not four or it's not two. It's one. It's one position with a unified goal. The unified goal: to trap the arm and attack the neck. Why? Because it's much easier to attack the neck if the arm is trapped. So mm -hmm, I'm always right. trapping the arm to attack the neck. So it, the chest with, with back or without is, hooks, right? I mean, like with the or goal without is the same. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the goal is the same because the core position is the same. I call it core positions, mm -hmm. right? Chest to back is a core position. Chest to chest is a core position, and supplemental are core core positions. So chest to back is turtle and back mount. So that's only one position. So now we go to chest to chest. You have guard, side mount, and mount. Mm -hmm. Okay, so side mount is what I call the central hub. From side mount, it's like Dallas Fort Worth. You can get to any position from side mount. That's mm. the starting point of what I call the meat grinder. Okay. Now there's a relationship. Like there's a relationship between side mount and guard. This is where most of the conflict happens. It's bypassing the legs that we're dealing with. But yeah, once you sure. understand how to bypass the legs, the legs are more or less irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So now you're only dealing with the relationship between turtle and side mount. Mm -hmm. Now the relationship between turtle and side mount is, is a twisting relationship. It's a twisting transition. Turtle, turtle and side well, mount. Then what okay, about north-south? North-south is the unattainable angle. Oh, I see. That's Tuesdays. So that's, sti that's, sti <laughs> that, that's Tuesdays. That, that's, sti that's, still part, that's still part of side mount. You call it sound mount, side mount. Side yeah, mount. Yeah, that's all part yeah, of side yeah. mount. Neon belly is still side mount. I because see, yeah, you're bypassing yeah, yeah. the legs and you're you. on the side, mm -hmm. right? Mount is what where I start my secondary attack strategy. So maybe I maybe I transition a mount, and when you transition a mount, now there's a link between 
the mount and the back. And mm -hmm. there is a twisting transition sure. between the mount and the back. So my job is to make that twisting transition as difficult as possible. So by the time you turn, you're not just turning your back, which is my behavior is making you turn your back. Yeah. But now you're turning your back out of desperation and because you're tired. Mm -hmm. As you're turning, I'm looking to trap the arm and attack the neck. So you were implementing this. All of this, all of this is bringing images in my mind. Yeah. Of when we roll, right? I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I can, now I, <laughs> I remember this happening. You know? Yes, <laughs> yes. And he was just going through his system. Right, These right. things were lighting up. Bing, yeah. bing. I see. I see. I see you. I look at it through the lens of what I call basic mechanics. You're okay. just a bunch of targets. There's mm -hmm. shoulder target, shoulder target, elbow target, hand target. Everything is, is. There's a way to to optimize the control on the body based on how you're holding, how you're pushing, and and certain mechanical aspects. And understanding the turning mechanic of going from your back to your knees and from your knees to your back is a highly overlooked and underrated um, control mechanism. People just let people turn. I love this because I, I have, uh, I, I don't teach, at a, I only teach sub. I'm a sub teacher at jujitsu school, so I don't have my own school or anything. So improvisation, that's all I do. So yes, I, yes. <laughs> I don't think about everything. It, so. <laughs> everything with me is kind of orchestrated, yeah. but, but it's, but it's very st difficult to stop. Yeah. It's very difficult to stop. That's why it's so, so neat. So supplemental is broken up into, into leg locks and arm locks. So if you look at supplemental, those are the extremities. Just right? The, uh, pull the so you have chest to back, chest to chest, and then supplemental are the extremities. So attacks on the extremities. The biggest difference between core ground positions where you have chest to back or chest to chest and, and, and supplemental is that the chest and the arms are the primary source of control from chest to chest and chest to back, mm -hmm. right? But when you get into the extremities, the legs are the primary source of control. Yes. If you have an arm bar, you're holding with the legs, and if sure, you have a leg lock, you're legs. holding with the legs. Yeah, yeah, Correct. Yeah, yeah. So the control mechanism is different because now you're engaging the legs to control rather than your chest. The, mm -hmm. chest, to, the chest to chest or chest to back connection in your arms. Yeah. So when you look at it through that lens, the simplicity, the simplicity of that lens, and you say, I know that you are stronger here. Better believe it. <laughs> than you are here. Yes or no? Yeah, of course. So now all I'm trying to do is make your arm do this. Yeah, so then you, fight it, back, <laughs> and then you fight it back. And then you fight it back. And then you fight it back. But I'm levering because I'm pulling you from here where the point is optimized. So no matter how yeah. hard you pull, the pull. The fulcrum. Yeah. It's like, why are you so heavy? How much do you weigh right now, by the way? 160. What are you? <laughs> Hey, do you think uh, is that too loud? Uh, I think it's. I think that's easy to edit out. I mean, we can edit the background fuzz, but then it lowers the quality of our voice sound a little bit too. And you can you can always hear it when like oh. We don't. We've never left it on before. Why don't we leave it on for a little bit and then we'll turn it off after we cool down. And then we can compare yeah, it because it's getting a little. It's, it's getting, hot. It's getting a little hot in here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Nick's dying over there. Yeah. So. Both Nick's. Both Nick's yeah. are dying. <laughs> um, so did you okay, learn continue. a lot of this stuff from uh, Rodrigo, or did you, this is your own kind of system going? Very cool. I, I, what, what I did when I was fighting was figuring out what worked. Like yeah, because you, were, you yeah. were testing. You were in the testing. waters. Testing I, was testing, I was testing against the best guys, right? So I, I, I understood how to take people down. I knew what worked there. I knew what takedowns were, worked more. I, I, I play a game of probability. I, 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 know that the, I, I know that the battles that I'm choosing, I'm going to more often than not win. And mm -hmm. if I lose, the energy exchange is still worthwhile for me. So I fight, I fight a game of probability knowing that maybe I'm going to lose here or there, but if we run the simulation a thousand times, I know I'm going to win 80% of the time. Right. You also married That's a great like team a... too, right? I did for a while, yeah. And then for a moment, did you like, you were you, at the beginning, you were like, I'm probably just going to take the Gracie name. Did you think no. about that? <laughs> I was already, I already had two world championships when I met her. I don't need to have my own name. <laughs> um, the... Uh, that that which I'm just trying to make the, you laugh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what you're talking about with the the probability and and move select or technique selection and battle selection, mm -hmm. I feel like that's the biggest thing that kind of goes unspoken with with like kind of the top grapplers right now, is that it it's just a matter of because we have, all have to select what we're going to be good at. Right, can't be good at everything. Right, like if you went, well, like, so, some things are hard to be good at because they're not effective. Right, because the probability is against you. Right, correct. So, and so, like, like all the time that you spend trying to master the buggy choke, it's like you can you get really good at that? Yes, but sure. even if you're amazing at it, at best it's at best it's fifty five percent. It has a, it has a positional threshold. I yeah. say it's, it's got a low positional threshold. Have you so, ever been buggy choked? 
No. <laughs> no. You can tell us. It's okay. Uh, no, the guy, the guy that came up with the boogie choke, actually, yeah. uh, I met him when, when, when it, when it started to become a rage, who, and, who, and I'm like, who okay. Was that? Oh my god, I forget the guy's name. I'm so sorry. Was he? Uh, was his last name well known? Buggy? No, his last name's not Buggy. Um, but, Michael but, Buggy. Um, but yeah, like I'm like, okay, put me in the choke. Right. And I like felt it and right. i just framed and waited and popped out of the choke no big right. deal right and then like he goes you're the you're there's only been one other person that's ever been able to do what you just did and no. he did it the exact same way that you just did it right now oh the frame it was the frame it was the framing he just framed it who was it oh, i don't know <laughs> who was it you don't know. <laughs> who was the other you person he don't Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm makes like, sense. Makes frames sense. frames yeah. work, huh? Yeah. Frames, frames pretty, work, yeah. And he's pretty relaxed, too. Like, he's a, I mean, I think he, there is no panic no. in Hiron's game. Universal comfort. That's mm. one of the desired results. Universal comfort. Mm. Oh, I like Standing, that. Standing, ground, top, bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave me some great advice one time. Uh, some of my favorite advice I've ever gotten in jiu-jitsu. We were at the treat, uh, retreat, and, uh, and we were playing a game. You take the back. You start with the back, and essentially you're gonna lose because the guy starts with the back and mm -hmm. like maybe a seatbelt. And uh, and I had a third degree guy. If you ever met him, a heavyweight black belt on His my name back. His name's Guy. His name's Guy. Mm. And uh, and he he like clamped down on me pretty hard. Went for a chin crank out of the gate, and I was like, oh my god, like, <laughs> oh, it's a serious now, you know. And uh, and I I wasn't going to let him on top of me because we were sitting. We were start a sitting position, you know. And, uh, and so I fought, you know, tooth and nail to finally kind of like get him off of me. And he went for an arm bar and he might, he was very close with the arm bar, but, uh, Huron was like, no, that was terrible. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? I got big, crazy guy off me. He was <laughs> like, you should, if you just, uh, you could have gone to the bottom and gone to let him mount you because I could, I was in that position yeah. and you could have used your back and scrape him off you. And I was like, what? I don't want a big heavyweight guy mounting me. Yeah. And he was like, that's because you're not confident in your that's mount defense. Right. <laughs> I was like, son of a biscuit, yeah. I guess I'm not. I, I, when I first started training with those guys, yeah, I was helping them train for Mark Lehman. Remember when they were doing yeah. the Mike Lehman? Mark Lehman, that's yeah. a cool, that's a name that, uh, yeah. So, so, so you, I, you remember I, I, Mark Lehman? Who, who was fighting Mark Lehman? Hedo. Hedo was fighting Mark Lehman. In a grappling match. In a grappling right, match, yeah. Oh, okay. And I had a he friend of mine. most we, famous white grappler that I think there <laughs> was, right? You remember so we had, a, we had a mutual friend that they're like, you got to train with Javi. Have, 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 have Javi come down and train with you guys. So I went down there and trained with them. And I, and I was doing good until I just got tired, right? Like I just got tired. Like I was, couldn't let, I wouldn't let him pass. Wouldn't let him pass. Wouldn't let this him is pass. against Hedo. Against Hedo. Okay. And then eventually he passed, and I was a bit tired, and then I, and then he mounted. And this is the time where I wasn't really spending a lot of time on the bottom. Like right now, I'm I'm always on the bottom. I don't mm -hmm. care. And he he mounted and he tapped me. He mounted and he tapped me. He mounted and he tapped me. And what he what I realized was what I learned was at some point, no matter how good your guard is, somebody will eventually pass, mm -hmm. no matter how good you are. And you better understand how to fight from I call it the four configurations now, but from from side mount bottom and understanding. How to work from there now if you can frame and put the guy in the guard great but can you do it every single time not just one time oh i got him off once no could you do it consistently every time and i realized that this is a major hole in my game so i spent two and a half three years just mount bottom let everybody mount me i remember i remember when i started the, the journeys like I'm, I'm comfortable just letting anybody on the street just mount me and i was just like holy crap dude i can't do that i know i can't do that now i can now i can now i don't care but it, it's it's wild actually there's like i've noticed there, there's kind of oh, uh, uh he <laughs> loves a good mount that's yeah. what he did to, into the 90s he right. would be uh 90 years old right and, uh, and he would let guys mount me yeah and he would like let the young guys mount him for a minute and a half and be like that's right you couldn't choke me beat it <laughs> <laughs> but there's a there's, there's a lot of black belts out there that if you can pass their guard then they're suddenly purple belts. They got nothing. They get real yeah, panicky. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because not that they're panicky, they just they just don't spend any time there. So yes, like, right. their defense it, has fallen off. You it's know? not fallen. It's not. It hasn't risen. Right, right. right. It, there, there's still a, a white belt mentality in 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 the side mount, and I think that has to do a lot with you know you know my 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 battle in my life, the the, the hill I'm dying on, which is which is understanding that the rules that are implemented are are not productive to success in jiu-jitsu the rules oh, are the, the jiu-jitsu rules yeah the jiu-jitsu rules so, we're kind you, of uh, before you yeah just turn the mic pointed at you um there you go so so like um i think that the rules that that are implemented or have been implemented obviously have a um what's the worst one 
point? Yeah, I mean, are we talking about IBJJF? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that the decisions that, that you make are altered based yeah, on the rule sure, set. Of course, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but those rules aren't designed for a, a, a desired result of everyone wanting to finish. I mean, they it, did the best. You know, it's like a progression of like changes and stuff like that. But what do you think? What's what's the worst? I mean, I mean, I, you, you got to choose. It's an enough. entire mindset. It's an entire mindset. It's the fact of the time. It's the fact. It's the fact of. Yeah. It's the fact of the point structure at all. The point structure at all. Um, you're you're not. You're so concerned. Yeah. about stopping people from passing your guard sometimes sure. the effective and efficient thing is to let them pass mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sometimes that is what makes the most sense mm. sometimes it doesn't make so much sense to be resisting from angles in the guard where it's uncomfortable and, and, and awkward to hold yeah. and here you are sitting there fighting and then by the time the guy you you, you hold off for a while but eventually yeah. the guy passes and now and you're then, exhausted exhausted yeah, yeah exactly yeah so sometimes it's easier just to let the guy pass and, and then recover, recover than it is to resist the the, the pass initially totally well wh why is that important because now you're you're instead of doing the right thing you're doing the thing that prevents the point penalty mm -hmm. so instead mm -hmm. of doing the efficient thing the thing yeah. that's most practical the thing that makes the most amount of sense for this particular interaction you're choosing to continue to fight bat bat your head against you know bash your head against the wall doing the wrong thing over and over because of this mysterious point system if i'm passing your guard and you turtle what's the first thing people do get the hooks mm -hmm. why yeah yeah, because, totally. be, because of the I mean, points. If I was punching somebody, I mean, like when I was fighting, I didn't put e hooks in. Exactly. So hitting them. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 look at how your decisions. Now you're changing the position to it's actually a harder position to hold. Mm -hmm. You can hit better. You can punch better. You can submit better. You can trap the arms better. All from turtles. So why are we inserting the hooks? It's 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 a programming that has been. Um, we, we've been taught that the guard is the secret, yeah. and, and, and we've been taught that, that these rules are, 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 are what jujitsu is, yet those guys that are world champions, I don't see them becoming world champions in MMA because mm -hmm. the style doesn't, it, it does, it's not effective for MMA. So the, the rules that you're creating, the rules that you're following, the rules that you're training under are creating a jujitsu that's less effective than it should be. That's, yeah, that's hard though. I, I, you can I only do like no rules. You'd have to do EBI I, rules. EBI rules. You like Let that me, one? I, I do. You're not penalized for for taking chances and potentially ending up in bad spots. Yeah. You have enough yeah. time to recover and and push a, a, a decent pace. It forces you to work on the the the. the, the, the 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 vulnerable aspects in your game by starting you on your back and on your on the arm bar mm -hmm. so it's you're training yeah. these positions and training how to get out of these positions quickly so that's a more practical and effective rule set and then and ultimately it's it's for submission my, my like what i always feel like the downside to the ebi rules is when i roll with guys that train for that mm -hmm. um they're very w because there's no punches so mm -hmm. they're like they're very willing to give up bad positions because they're like doesn't matter it only matters if you tap me you know correct whereas like like they pin their, they, their they'll let you to put the you inside don't put go them inside mount right they'll, they'll you know but, like, but, you but, put them inside mount all day and they're like i don't care because they're not being tapped yeah i understand but but that's far better than um i'd rather have them be that confident in bad position at least that's an applicable skill that we're building then 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 ignoring the bottom of the side mount just getting really good at people preventing from passing the guard true yeah. so so it's very limiting so yeah. so again we're trying i'm trying to you know how are we going to grow this as a whole how are we going to increase the effectiveness as a whole to co combat jujitsu man i think so i mean that was that was that's a great solution but people don't want to get hit right right yeah what, what's uh what's the cg cji rules what are they doing? It's basically it's a point system, but rounds. So it's no, there's no points. Combat jujitsu? No, no, no. Oh, no CJI. The, uh, Craig, oh, CJ. Craig, Craig Jones. Jones. Oh, the Craig yeah, Jones yeah, one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The drama. It's so fun, right? It's now. like it's a, it's a it's a it's a point system. I I think it's just like similar to ACC, like in their point system, but then it's three five minute rounds. It's kind of confusing because it's, it's a ten must scoring system. So it's like if you score more points, regardless of how many points. You, you win a 10-9 round or if you win like if you uh, or a 10-8 round or whatever but it's still like 
if you you have to win two out of three rounds. Oh my god, I fell asleep. When yeah, you were talking I, about I, I think it's a bad idea. It, it's, it's a stupid rule set. <laughs> it, it's it's the, the the best rule set. CBI. I think it's the best rule set. Right on. Um, it is cool. It, it gives finality. I used to do tournaments. I used to run tournaments with uh, with my ex years ago, and we had no time limit. Every yeah. match. Did you? And, and, Did you? And and, and the Fun. matches and the matches. What, what if nobody, if uh, it was no time limit in the finals, but every match I think was ten or fifteen minutes. So if you okay. and I drew and nobody submitted, we were both out. I love that. What, I t- love what tournament? That. Gracie Nationals. Gracie oh Worlds. yeah, yeah, that's right. Wow, yeah, that's that was super my first cool. ever tournament. Yeah, those are mine. Those are mine. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. My first ever one. I had trained for like two weeks total, and I got submitted in like thirty seconds each match. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, the, oh, we, had, we, had a lot of, we had a lot of good matches in, in those tournaments, but the biggest complaint was, what? you know, um, oh, you know, why are we both out? Because you didn't submit. He stalled because could people matter. stall? Yeah, doesn't yeah. matter. If you could stall like a better opponent, I would yeah. do that. I'd yeah. be like, wow, you're super good. Guess what? We're both out here in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, 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 but I, I still, I'm telling all I my still friends. Think, I still think that that produces a better skill set. At least you're not getting tapped. That's a, that's a better yeah. Yeah. mindset to have overall. Yeah. So I look at the mindset of the individual. That's why it's, you know, ten time world champion or whatever. They pass my guard. I put him back in. They pass my guard super fast. I put him back in. They pass my guard super fast. Put him back in. Uh-huh. Eventually, they kind of stop trying to pass. You're almost training them to stop trying to pass. Mm-hmm. Ten time world champion. You're talking about Hadra Gracie right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've rolled. I've rolled with guys who have won a lot of world championships, and it's the same result. You just put him back. Just keep going. I had I had amazing results actually when I applied that uh, get way better at my guard or my uh, mount fence. So I would you know not let people mount, but if they did get to mount, I would just be super chill about it and I would wait until they would open up. Eventually, when normally I would f- kind of fight pretty mm-hmm. hard, and then that's when I was vulnerable. I would just wait till they opened up and they were vulnerable. And uh, yeah, I had makes amazing things success. easier. Oh, I had amazing. I would just I would watch openings go by. I'm like, whoa! You just you observe you just, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go on this one. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you you get to a state of observation. You're in, yeah. in a state of presence and observation. It's really cool. Yeah, it, there's, but but the only thing that, the reason why that's not super effective is just time, because it it, it right. requires right. time it for does. that to to yeah, work. Exactly. For sure. So if you're rolling with a guy, you know, five minute rounds, it's hard to kind of implement that kind of yeah. game plan. Hundred percent. Um with that kind of strategy because time is the limiting factor mm-hmm. and 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 that's a lot of times what happens is the decisions the decisions that competitors are making a lot of times are based on how much time is left I, on the clock totally it's a game it's a game, it's a game. at that point i i like to uh, every once in a while at our school we'll do like sub only and we'll be like there's no time on you're gonna roll a, until somebody until taps. the class is over if nobody taps oh, and then if if, hate that. if uh if there's a submission then you just you go to the wall and then and so you know like you're available right like there's a sub you go to the wall and you find okay this person's coming to the wall okay and you just start again sub only forever and uh it's it's cool because it because it, it actually kind of motivates people to get subs really faster because cool. they're like i'm not trying to be rolling for 20 minutes i know <laughs> you know what i mean but, like but you got to be careful with your energy because if you go hard and, right. and then they're able to sustain it right, right. you're tired yeah so, but i mean that's uh that's a great that's thing like reality like with fighting you know what i mean it's like how like you want to sub the guy but how how um, conservative should you be? Because if you put if you go balls out for the sub and it doesn't work out, then you kind yeah, of screwed yourself. You know what I mean? You have to go frame by frame. You have to win uh, the mean? battles frame by frame. Like what? What do you mean by frame? Um, so, for example, uh, if you're in side mount top and I'm hugging your neck, that's on one top. frame. Okay. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I frame in front of your neck, that's an that's a frame. Mm-hmm. That's 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 a that's a that's one frame. If you're in side mount, I dig an underhook. That's that's a frame. Okay, we went from one to the other. One one little battle. At yeah, a time. it's 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 when in order for somebody to turn to 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 their to their knees, there's a me, there's a mechanism that's in place. They have to turn to quarter side mount first, then they either come up to their elbow or their knee, and then they come up to the final point. You can't do it any other way than that. It's either you come up one of two ways, and and that's it. Right. You can't go from side mount to turtle without hitting these. Being one of those things. Without ha- going through this exact sequence of events, frame by frame, like click, click, click. Way to click. get on top in that scenario, though. 
That was, that was respect. What do you mean? You, in that scenario, the, you, you were on top in that. Just so you know. Wait, he said that. No. <laughs> no, you was on top in that scenario, though, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's on, he's on yeah, top. I'm but, just but, saying, that's good job. Oh, yeah. Being on top in that scenario. <laughs> what, 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 starts, what starts the process is attention shift. Attention shift is, is what starts the escaping process. Mm -hmm. So from side mount, there's, there's three tension shifts, really. One is to frame the neck, two is to get the underhook, and three is to swim the arm off your neck. That kind of starts your behavior. That starts making you start reacting okay. in one way or the other. If I sure. frame your head, you switch yeah. your hips. Mm -hmm. If you I better. get the underhook, you start to drop your weight. You better. If you have to. <laughs> you have to, because what happens if you don't? You get, you get flown off. The guy starts getting out. Right, right, right. So my behavior is hijacking your behavior because if you don't do what I'm telling you to do, I'm out. Mm -hmm. what, if, what if Dirty Nick gets his feet in? Dirty Nick, your student. There's a trick to that. Yeah. I already told you. He's trick dirty to Nick. That. He goes, yeah, yeah, you're Dirty Nick. And you, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dirty Nick. But so <laughs> I noticed you got a. Uh, you can go. Uh, you can do full butterflies, knees to the side, the ground, yeah. can't you? Yeah, that, that's one of the uh, He's the, the biggest reasons. pain in the ass. Yeah. He's the biggest pain. Like, when I when I, when I was passing people's guards, I would just split everybody's guard, just split and pass. Mm -hmm. Until, and I know what the counter to, to the split pass is, or one of the counters, which is to use what I call a baby hook, which is your shin across the front of their mm -hmm. shin. So you're going kind of shin to shin. Right, right. Um, I generally don't have problems with people bringing their foot in once I've split. It's just not a thing. They don't mm -hmm. have an angle Enough dexterity to, to get there yeah. until I get, came across this guy. Yeah, yeah. So once I came across this guy, I realized that that, that's that battle, no matter how good I am at it, has a threshold. Each position, mm. each battle has a positional threshold. North south, it, you go to north south, then everything has a everything has a threshold. No. So when he started to bring that that foot in, I know. From, from side mount top, from chest to chest top, that it's the bottom knee that is the problem. The bottom knee is what starts chest, everything. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. It doesn't matter what the top knee does, even if okay. they're shielding you. If I thread through and block the bottom knee, he can't ever shoot the knee across to face me. Hmm. So now he's locked into a twisting position, which again engages the central point. So now you're fighting from an uncomfortable position. And either A, you turn, you could try to get the knee through. The, I, 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 last time I rolled with him, I figured that out because I thought about it. I'm like, I'm still going to go after the bottom knee. And then he shot the foot in. And then when he went to get the knee out, he goes, bam, he was stuck. Let's See, roll again, Nick. I'm smashing that guard now. Yeah. <laughs> you were doing that on that. Yeah. Was I? Oh, dang, respect. <laughs> nice. So, how could, no, honestly, though, how cool is this? To, uh, to roll first that we all get to roll first and then we like can actually because otherwise we're just talking about positions and we're like hmm like i get I, <laughs> you know it's very hard to audio it's it's hard to describe positions and make it make sense mm -hmm. yeah I'm but trying once to, we get to engage it makes a lot of sense with, with this i'm trying to everything is color coordinated in the system so, so, so e it's beautiful yeah so it's everything gorgeous. orange is back mount everything yellow nice. is turtle everything green is mount so when you're reading the maps i have maps that are leading you through the, I call it a timeline of events, right? Mm -hmm. So as, 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 I'm, as I'm doing that, you start seeing the color, the color automatically triggers the position. So what it starts doing is it pop, starts popping a visual in your head. So it, it starts to run the, the reel in your head. So you so see th colors when you roll is what you're saying. The colors are, <laughs> the colors are, 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 are designated to position. So mm -hmm. I don't see the color, I just see the position after a while. Mm -hmm. So you really reminded me of Josh Waitskins if you might be familiar with that, uh, he made uh, Marcelo Garcia's website. He's a black belt in Marcelo Garcia. He's the guy that uh, wrote uh, Art of Learning. He's mm -hmm. also the guy that the the movie Finding Bobby Fischer is about him. Oh, really? Yeah, so he's yeah. the number one ranked chess player from eight to eighteen years old, and uh, in the Tai the two thousand four Tai Chi National Push Hands Champion, which world, is pretty cool. World Push Hands Champion. World Push Hands. Oh, yeah. So, uh, uh, one of and, and he was a Jiu Jitsu Jiu Jitsu World Champion up to brown belt. I'm not, he didn't win anything at Black Belt. He was a little. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know he was up to Brown Belt. Respect. Yeah. And to, like uh, one, one of the first guys to get their Black Belt from Marcelo. White skins. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's but a G. One, one, yeah, top G for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one of the things he says is uh, your, when he was teaching kids chess, uh, there is a timeline of reality. And he says that uh, what happens is you are winning or, or let's say let's say you start winning you feel good you're winning doing cool stuff and then uh and then s something happens and you get a move down and now you're even yeah. except for you have a winning mentality so he says that what happens to young chess players is the 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 downward spiral of compound errors yep so they make one mistake and then they're they keep the mentality of 
I'm winning, even though I'm even now, but I just, you know, like progress outside the realm of reality. I mm -hmm. get like this offshoot where this is reality, but I'm out here, like I'm doing this and uh, you're describing things a lot in that way, same, which is pretty cool. Same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, I started to, to recognize that it's much easier to behave in a way that leads an opponent rather yeah. than fighting the opponent every second of the way. Sure. Mm -hmm. I recognize that by optimizing the control, immediately it makes the opponent strain harder for the same amount of kind That's of perfect. effort. Right? So by leading them in a particular way, by understanding that everything is configuration theory, there's some configurations that are green, there's some configurations that are red. We go away from the red and towards the green and fight from the greens. So now if you don't know which ones are green and which ones are red, you're just kind of lost and everything is coming at you very quickly. Yeah. But so is, that, is that like, like red is when the odds are against you? Yes, where the probability is less where the probability is less than 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 fifty. Mm -hmm. The green zones, the probability is more than fifty. Yellow, you better slow down. Green and green and red. Green and red. Oh, all right. Green all and right. red. It, it's pretty. I just want to be a part of this conversation. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty. Pretty simple. Like, um, again, some, some configurations you're far more far more vulnerable than others. So that's mm -hmm. red. Mm -hmm. Some configurations maybe you're not in a great spot, but it's your best next step. It, right, it, it, right. You're, you're the next best place to be, because if your arm is on this side rather than that side, things are worse. So you know that at, at the very least you're working towards the 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 right direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so I, I really am curious about. Uh, you've had so many fights. You've been uh, uh, like you're a pioneer in MMA. I mean, just looking at uh, the list of organizations that you've been with and stuff. I was interested in some uh, a little bit of fight stories. Uh -huh. I'm kind of like excited to hear the the best and the worst. Did you have like some super quick subs that were super fun and things um, went down right? What's your favorite? What's your favorite fight memory? Uh, I think the Jens Pulver fight because oh, it was yeah. just it was just such a long. I wanted that fight for so long, and then I retired, and then I came back, and then the opportunity got presented to me. So um, I think that was a, a a real big one, just because there's a lot going on personally in in my personal life that that was that I was dealing with. So it was uh, it was. Uh, it was, I was, I think I was coming off of two losses, which mm -hmm. I've never had two losses in a row. And there were two losses that I should have won. Those are pretty bad decisions. Uh -oh. Yeah. Um, so where was your, what was your head at going into that? Like, how were you feeling? Into the gen spot fight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had to win. Yeah. You and, to win. and I'm really curious about this. Where was his head at? Because I have a theory. If you spend too much time on your hair, that I feel like you're going to lose because that's <laughs> time you should have been training. And he kind of um, like went real wacky on his hair. I don't you know, know about it. Um, Tell that to Sugar Sean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they did a documentary um, when he fought me. Oh, really? Yeah. So from his perspective? From his perspective, okay. which was which is pretty interesting wow. because I knew what I was thinking on, right. on my side. Too. Yeah. Um, well, at, what, what, did you watch it? Were you like, yeah, oh, really? That was, at that the was... end, it says that... that you know, he lost my arm bar to me. You know, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> you were like, I can't Dude. wait to get through this documentary. Here. Right. I feel like every time they do, uh, they do a documentary like that. Because, you know, when you do a documentary real time, you don't know how it's going to turn you out. Know, you know, yeah. they did like they did one with Chad George, too. And it was like basically about his comeback. And it was just like inspiring, inspiring. Like, this is the one. He's gonna, you know, you know, burst back into the scene, and then he lost. And, and it was like, like oh, oh, that was a bad movie. And then the Smashing <laughs> Machine, they yeah. were like, we're gonna do a cool documentary. Oh, you're a drug addict. <laughs> yeah, like, that, that, oh. that had a tough turn. A, How about tough. the uh, The Rock is gonna play yeah. uh, Mark Kerr in the Smashing Machine? Have you heard that? No. How fun is that gonna be? Yeah, the that's Rock. Oh man, I mean, I'm super excited. Will it be good? I Oh, my, I mean, I'm excited for it. The old, have you ever seen the Smashing Machine? I'm just saying that, you know, how many good movies does The Rock make these days? Oh, my God, Nick. That is, The Rock makes the amazing Rock, the Rock, movies. The Rock peaked at Scorpion King. <laughs> <laughs> you better get out of here with this. He, his, uh, his Instagram and his cheat days are fire. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so uh, that the gentleman was your, so what, what was the, uh, because I've never seen the, the documentary with Jens, so what about what was going through his mind that was surprising to you he was going through a lot he he he's had uh he's had some pretty tough you mm -hmm. know things happen in his life and uh was he still with the Militech team uh, or did he leave them? i think it was 
definitely towards the, the, the tail end of it. I don't think there was Miletic guys in his corner when I fought him. Really? Um, I don't think so. This was after he, he had fought Dwayne. We went to Canada and Dwayne knocked him out. Like I, he left the UFC, gave up the belt, and then went. Dwayne fighting. Ludwig? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. So he went, when you said you had a friend in Denver, were you talking about Dwayne? Because that's what. Dwayne, that's, Dwayne's another one. Yeah, Dwayne's oh, okay. a good friend of mine too. But nice. uh, Steve Ordinsky's in Littleton who's a good friend of mine oh, too. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I was tra- when I lived there, I was training with Dwayne for about two and a half, three years. Dwayne's the one that told me when I showed him this. It was Dwayne that told me, he goes, Javi, I know how good you are, but it's too much. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's too much. I know you're good. Oh, this? Yes. And he goes, Make it simpler, make it simpler, make it simpler. Oh, okay. This was years ago. This oh, is when really? I was writing the books and he was just and I showed him that. He goes, Javi, it's too much. He goes, I know it works. I know and I know you're gonna figure out how to how to translate it, but it's too much right now. So then, and that was at the same time that he was writing his curriculum. Uh-huh. So um jujitsu I think is a little bit more complex than striking. I think uh striking is a little bit simpler to kind mm. of systemize. Mm-hmm. Um and he he's done a good job with that's the same striking system that I learned was Bossa system. Was it? Yeah, yeah, I mean that's obviously he's far better than me, but it you know, I know the basic mechanics of the system. That's that's what like drew me to train with him because um not a lot of strikers are system systemized thinkers. You know what I mean? It makes it easier. Yeah. It makes it it's the only way I learned striking was to do it that way. Yeah. It made it it made it a lot more plausible. The the thing that I missed was footwork. You know, that's the, as far as the striking combinations, movement, and all that. I think it's a good system. Um, maybe Dwayne implements more than than I learned because this is he does many he teaches years. a lot of footwork. Yeah, a lot of footwork. Back ba- back in the day, that was that was my weak link was the footwork. I, I only learned really how to get better at footwork like my last fight when mm. I fought Joe Stevenson in the UFC. Does footwork really matter? If uh, I mean, I've seen Boss Rutan's uh, uh, street fighting video, <laughs> and uh, and so since I've seen that. Uh, do you think I'm an f- effective in the street if I can get a chair and uh, in front kick to the groin? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was a bouncer for five five years. Were you? Yeah, yeah. So, so I've I've been in plenty of like kind of bar fights. And not, yeah. Thank God I never got stabbed or shot. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Bar fights are wild, man. You gotta, you gotta, you know, people throwing chairs, people. Did you use Boston's ta- tactics? I never hit to, like, anybody. Talk to the guy first. Yeah, of course. Do you remember I, I, his tactics? He would say he had a little story. He would say he'd be like, hey, what do you do for a living? And they'd be like, I'm a plumber. Are you a good plumber? They'd be like, yeah, I guess. And then he'd be like, you know what I do? I kick people out of this bar. (laughs) 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 And I'm good at it. Super good. So, and you need to go, sir. I never, I never, I never. (laughs) <laughs> I never, I never hit anybody. I didn't. I just choke people and drug them out. Yeah, choke them, drug them out, choke them, drug them out. I was out, uh, out. You choke them out, out. out. Oh yeah. And then just carry them out over your shoulder. Or uh, just drag them by friend? Their, Yeah, just drag them by their neck out. Just <laughs> by their neck. I always, I always tell people that uh, before Uber existed, like bouncing was the unofficial sponsor of underpaid fighters. Of course, <laughs> all of the course. fighters were always bouncers, and then Uber came around, and then like, dude, you get an Uber. <laughs> Ten percent chance that guy's an MMA fighter because <laughs> they all need flexible oh, schedules so they can go to practice in the middle of the day and shit. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? you listen to this, Dana White. <laughs> Pay your fighters. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Jens Pulver. Jens Finish Pulver. that up. So why? Yeah. Just uh, how how did the match go? Completely. I haven't seen. Oh. Uh, you submitted him, right? I think I, 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 I watched. I watched. I watched. I took him down. Beat him. Yeah. Yeah. Beat him Dang, in top of yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he didn't Amazing. know. He, he didn't. You know, he was like, he did. He felt very, very, very human when I grabbed him. Mm-hmm. I thought I was expecting like super strong, super explosive. Yeah, yeah. Because right? he, I think he was deceptive. I think yeah. he was deceptively good. Like he didn't expect what he. What when he had. I grabbed him, I felt like he felt very human. He felt very human. I like mm-hmm. what you said, he didn't know. He didn't know. <laughs> That's the first thing he said. No, he didn't know. He didn't know what the thunder I was bringing. <laughs> But That's um, cool. the other one was Romina Sato when I fought in Japan. Oh, whoa, crazy. Yeah. yeah. That, that was, that in was Japan. crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. What? Because back in the day, it was like if you went down there, you didn't go down there to win. You went down there because they were bringing you in to lose. Yeah, you, know, really? you were. So, um, you know. That was Shudo? Shudo. Wow. I didn't realize the Shudos. Were, were they all in Japan? Uh, no, I fought Shudo out here. I fought Rob Emerson out here oh, okay. in Las Vegas. Did they, did they ask you to lose? No, no, no. They just assumed I would. Yeah, you're fresh meat. <laughs> like, nah, we don't need to tell him. He, 
Yeah, he will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you want it. So, want so it went, yeah, it went, it went to a decision and it was a pretty bad, pretty one sided pounding. Yeah. And I still thought I lost because I'm like, they're just going to give it to this yeah, guy. Right, sure. Right, right, right. Yeah. They gave it to you. They, yeah. Dang, they respect. respect. Nice. Get them, get <laughs> <Hell yeah>. some. <laughs> um, so, how long did you stay in Japan? What was Japan like? I hated it. <laughs> I really? Get out of here, I didn't really? Like it. Yeah. Oh, my God. The air quality seemed not, not like, the same and then like the jet lag was not great how long were you there did you not have uh, enough time i think i was there like seven or eight days can't you just get women out of like vending machines there and stuff too <laughs> <laughs> you know when, when i fought i was you know even, even to this day and he, he like you know people around me know i'm pretty introverted so mm. i i kind of just stay in the hotel stay focused won my match got my check and went home you didn't yeah. find the waterfall that hickson stuck his head under no, you didn't no, just no. go to that mountain and, and take some hickson energy no, and, no, no. <laughs> like i would have samurai. never i would have never gotten into cold water what? Oh, 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 really? are you crazy are you crazy <laughs> <laughs> unless it was like 80 degrees i wasn't getting really? in the water 100 percent. oh respect the, professor because you did you the, did the, the, first time, lot, huh? the first time i did that dude i thought i was gonna die yeah <laughs> yeah that's why it's so good yeah see <laughs> realize you don't you didn't die and you're like yeah Whoa. the first time i did it I, I i dipped so i like dipped in and dipped out and then so then I, the second time i did it was like whatever like six or eight months later yeah and then i'm like i, I think i could stay for a minute and then yeah. i did a minute and i felt like dying yeah and well the then, first minute is the hardest part that's what i'm right? saying so I, so, so I didn't know you just that. did the dying yeah. part i did yeah. the dying <laughs> part i didn't get the benefit part so that's why i asked you when we were there i said i said dude i feel it's like the shock how do you do that i'm like i can't calm down i'm like i, I eventually calmed down yeah. um and it took me about three and a half minutes and he's like no no no, i can't get that down to about a minute yeah. mm -hmm. so then when you showed me how to do it i'm like yeah it was still cold i still didn't want to do that third minute but, but you um, did three minutes i did two i did two you did two and then, but uh, you use the breath work. So you're at the workshop at Grace University uh, last weekend. And uh, yeah, what, what did you think? Were you able to, so you say it in a minute using that? Uh, two minutes, two minutes. It took me a minute to kind of calm That's what down. I mean. You got calm in a minute. Yeah. Super cool. Is, yeah. is cold plunging still relatively new to you? Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I got to get really mentally psyched. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's awesome. I um, love it. That reminds me, uh, just getting on the vein of, of health stuff, um, a completely different battle fight for you is that you had cancer and recovered from it yeah so i i uh i want to get into what you did because you didn't do it through chemo right no. or you did no chemo, chemo at all and... no chemo no. dang i've been dying to the Gersh gershwin therapy right yeah yeah oh, gerson, what, what? yeah gerson therapy okay so that that's that's the protocol that i used to to beat the cancer so like from the time i got 2017 was a rough year. <laughs> 2017 was a rough year. So I got I got diagnosed in June. I had you got cancer and got divorced in the same year. And I lost my academy, and I had to open up another academy, oh, and I got goodness. promoted. Like it was a rough year. <laughs> it was a rough year. Whoa! It was a rough year. Um, so I ended up getting cancer in June. I filed for divorce in March. Then I then I then I got cancer in June. Then in August I had surgery. Uh -huh. Then in November I was already cured. And he then, said it was a uh, colon cancer. Yes, stage you, three. I really wanted to ask you: is, do, you do you attribute anything to it? Was it your diet? Like, do you, do you like? It was the protocol. It was the mindset. It was the work ethic. No, no, sorry. Uh, uh, yes, getting over it. For I mean, the, I, I can't wait to get into that. But uh, the the getting of cancer. Do you do? You, do I you understand. Have any I understand why it happened. Do you? Yes, one hundred percent. What what happened? Your thoughts can make you healthy and your thoughts can make you sick. So if your mind starts to spiral out of control and you're constantly feeling negative thoughts and neg yeah. those thoughts produce feelings, those feelings are chemical dumps that your brain is producing into your body. The longer that you continue to think those thoughts and, and not purge the negativity and it continues over a period of time, your body de denigrates and starts to develop Wow. That's my, how it happened. My mom's uh, uh, been an emergency room nurse for a million years. And, uh, <laughs> and she said stress is acid rain on your yes. body. She yes. said like mental stress, like um, the stress yes. you put on yourself. My my doctor told me, he goes, how how are you even here? She goes, are, you're, you're an athlete. I was a world-class athlete. Yeah. He goes, she's like, are you a meat eater? I'm like, no, I was vegan at the time. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm under a lot of stress. I'm like, stress is through the... You were vegan at the time that you yeah. got diagnosed yes. in stage three. You didn't. You skipped the other stages. You're, yes, <laughs> you just straight, go, you just, straight for the jugular. No, yeah, you go hard. Whatever yeah. you do, huh? Yeah. All right. So, so um, I never realized the relationship between your thoughts and and your body. I just 
didn't think that they were connected. I mean, stress I was, I was, is like the biggest. Yeah, the I was killer. always, I was always so good at kind of just shelving emotion, shelving negativity from fights. I'd just be able to just go into a different mental mm-hmm. state. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was always so good at just kind of ignoring, ignoring, ignoring. But over time, as you do that and not addressing the problem, which is the problem builds. The same thing with the with the carbon dioxide in your lungs. If you're not purging that stuff out and giving your body wow. a certain amount of um, recovery time, but but it's um, it's about to fall. Great regu- analogy. It's, a, it's like regulation, like your body's natural regulation, your homeostasis. Yes. Right. So so if you're out of homeostasis for for too long, then your body starts becoming acidic and it starts to break down. Well, that's when I came across, across Wim's stuff because I had to calm my mind down. My I mind see. was spinning out of control. So, How'd you come across G- Gershwin therapy? Uh, when I was fighting in my early 30s, uh, when I was in the WEC, I, I just w- was having a very hard time recovering. I always felt tired and I was working super hard. So I'm like, how am I working super hard and I'm still this tired? It made yeah. no sense. Mm-hmm. So I started looking into supplements. I started looking into like nutrition and then I came across um, Charlotte because they were talking about, because I was looking into veganism and changing my diet. So she, this old lady was always popping up talking about, yeah, we've been curing cancer since 1912 or whatever. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, they cure, they have a cure for cancer. So I just put it in the back of my mind. Like, what's, oh, okay. what's the protocol? Tell them, that, yeah. The protocol is broken up into four parts. There's, there's fresh juices that you're supposed to do. I had to do up to 12 a day um, at the maximum. You slowly go up six, nine, 12. 12 is the maximum a day. So you're 12 hours a day, you're taking juices, right? Okay. Uh, every juice so has a lot, it, a lot of pooping. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that's every, your, every you're juice, setting toilet paper on fire. Yeah, <laughs> every, every juice has an accompanying, basically, uh, supplement protocol that goes along with it. Okay. Um, so that's the second part of supplementation. Third is the food. When you say supplementation, is it like whole food supplements? No. Or is it like vitamin D? specific vitamins and yes. minerals. Okay. It, it, your blood work is drawn and then and then based on your blood work they're they're supplementing you accordingly to to, to whatever you're lacking. Okay. So then the, the final part is detoxification. They do it through coffee enemas, they do it through castor oil, they do it through um you could do it through um UV light, the the red light. What's mm-hmm. it called? Does the, it? Uh, uh, ultra, ultrasonic. Uh, I've heard that you get a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of toxins come out in your sweat when you yeah. do that as opposed to like a hot sauna. Yeah. That actually um, uh, the red light. And then goes, I, goes I start, then I started doing breath work. I started doing sound healing. I started doing, like I threw everything at the problem, but it was like, you know, two oh. years of just thinking of health, 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 health. How health. often do you do coffee with? enemas? Uh, at the peak? Sure. Four yeah. a day. Woo! Dang, what? you are fresh and squeaky clean down yeah. there, huh? I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you. I'll, wow. t- I'll, t- I'll tell you what it does is it, it gives you the diet gives you clarity. You see the world, and you're very sensitive to energy. I feel very sensitive to energy vibration. I could feel your energy. Oh, thank so you. So I can feel your thoughts. Is it I, good can, or is it? I feel insecure now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't yeah. feel your, you're clouded. It's all that, uh, so, it's all so, that McDaisy. So, eat. <laughs> so yeah, I th- I think that. Um, it allows you to think very clearly. Mm-hmm. So this I've heard is, that. So I've been, you know, over the past seven years, this is all I've been doing is just kind mm-hmm. of simplifying everything and, and seeing things very clearly. Um, so what's your, I'm super curious. So what's your coffee protocol now? I do between two and three. The, re- the reason a, a day. Week. A, a day. A coffee enemas a day. Yes. Wow. Okay. The reason, the reason you is. You can do them at home? Yes. Oh. Very easy. Oh. Very easy. Um, the reason one um, I don't get sore. It pulls out the the the, the, the toxins immediately. So I'll train really? or go for a sixty mile bike ride, go do treatment, then I'm not sore the next day. Huh. Wow. So it pulls out the stuff instantly out of your bloodstream. The other the other thing that it does is because my my colon I had to have a resection surgery, so they Did cut a, full, a foot of my colon. So that was oh, wow. super painful, and because of that it's it's it just eases the, the the digestive process so the way i look at it is i'm just helping my body flush out the toxins so they're not unnecessarily kind of building in my, in my does that tighten up your abs a little though you lose a little colon and you're like no it's <laughs> <laughs> trying to hey, think of the positive side before you uh got there um about 45 minutes before you arrived the <laughs> um brutal javi, <laughs> javi uh cured like a nagging injury that I've had. Get out of here. Yeah, what? With <laughs> like five seconds. So if I, if you remember I was telling you a while ago I rolled with uh, uh, 
Barry Ishida. Yeah. And I remember you telling me, uh, remember me telling you, he mm-hmm. put me in a wrist lock. That honestly, it uh, it wasn't, it didn't hurt. Yeah, like, and I just because. Yeah, your wrist. You know, are... he's you know he's a well known guy. I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to be that guy. They're like, no, I'm not tapping. You know what I mean? So I was like, ah, you know, nice one. Yeah, tapped. yeah, yeah. But it, honestly, if it was somebody else, I would not have tapped. It didn't feel tight. Okay. But my wrist fucking hurt for like has really? hurt for months. Like it didn't really? hurt the moment. Yeah. And then when I later I was like, dude, my wrist is killing me. And wow. It's been hurting for like months and months. Yeah. And he, <laughs> I love how I just realized I realized do? that subconsciously, like the part about it not hurting, yeah. what wasn't actually relevant to the story. I just wanted to be like, he didn't actually wrist lock me. Just <laughs> right, like I wasn't gonna tap, <laughs> but I was like, my... yeah. But I, I did, realized that now because he's the man. I subconsciously slipped that. Have you ever had any? Are you rolled with uh, Barrett? I'd love to roll with Barrett. Oh yeah. man, he gets he gets down to it. The uh, at Legion, he comes sometimes in mm-hmm. uh, Barooms. You ever go to Barooms? Barooms. I'm, is, I'm, uh, I, I I live in my. Your... My, my little bubble. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna have you down, man. There's the open mats on Sundays are amazing, and uh, and Barooms would be a, a super cool place. It's a real small place, but uh, Alfredo Baroom uh, started really started the open mat uh, thing going on in San Diego. Mm. But and, wait, so yeah, yeah. so my wrist was hurting for months. Yeah, months. And then and Nick's wrist was hurting, and then so I yeah. was doing the thing, and I was just looking at him being in pain. <laughs> Yeah, uh, dirty neck over here. Yeah, and, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, "Oh yeah, I had the same thing." He laid me down, and he did. He more or less, you know, released like the uh, the muscles Release in my forearms. Energy. Yeah, it's just an energy bound. What, dude? It like Is this some tai chi it, like dude, qigong. Instantly, I could feel my whole arms go, and just like really tension, just like let go. And he like pulled my fingers back, and so like I couldn't post my hand on the mat and put weight on that for a while. And uh, look, I mean, yeah, right. What? That, that's as far as my wrist has ever gone. <laughs> I mean, that's more than me. I don't. Mine don't even go flat. Nick, yeah. Nick, Nick would tell me, "I'm like, you want me to fix it?" And he's just like, "No." And then like, I prefer now, the, I prefer now, the he, now he's like, "My wrist is hurting." I'm like, "You want me to fix it?" He's just like, yes. <laughs> "Yeah, go ahead." And then I do it. It was insanely painful. The, the, so it this is so painful. this so this is what I discovered about what during my healing process i learned about this i call it maintenance and recovery right so when your wrist hurts when your elbow hurts it's the same muscles so what i do is i tense the muscle i attack the muscle directly okay and then i just kind of strip it on the way down as i'm doing when i apply the the pressure everything tenses Mm -hmm. your shoulders your neck everything you do this and i say (laughs) breathe deep breaths in the air substitutes the pain removes the pain the more air you take in the more the pain goes away so when you regulate your breath you can start to feel the pain being thrown away oh you told me this so, with the biking this is so cool yeah it's the same thing with massage so i so i i relaxed you you felt i said relax your hips relax mm-hmm, and i just mm-hmm. walk you through and you go dun, 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 dun. you felt your whole body go dun. yeah totally the second it dropped now i just strip and then i you felt it at the end at the very end it pops yep yep for it. sure. Really? Same, same thing nuts. with him. Same thing. How did you learn this? Did you discover trial and error. this? Trial and error. Really? Oh me my God. being worked on and, awesome. then, and then seeing what worked for me. Yeah. Um, like, but I have a high pain tolerance, so some people just can't take it. But when I do it, they're like, it's so intense, especially the neck and stuff. And there's certain like the forearm is very intense, the the hip is very intense. But there's there's ways to to. I say massage is a scam. Okay. I say it's a scam because mm-hmm. what these guys are doing is, for example, the neck. I start from the bottom to the top on the neck, and I can get your neck done in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh-huh. And these guys go and they do your neck for an hour, and it feels like okay yeah. because they start from the top to the bottom. I talk to my friend who, who, who's a massage therapist. I'm like, you guys are top to go top to the bottom. I go, why? The bigger muscles are at the bottom. You're actually releasing more of the muscle quicker if you start from the bottom to the top. He goes, yeah, it takes longer for us to go to talk to the bottom. I'm like, of course it does because that you're benefiting not by fixing the person, but you're benefiting by keeping them on the table longer. Mm-hmm. So they're, maybe they are fixing it, but there's a faster way to fix it. Remember I was telling you, rapid rapid results. Mm-hmm. I want rapid results. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be three hours on a massage table if you can get it done in an hour and a half. Let's get into that next uh I don't know how long we have, or I don't even know what's I, I, going. I was going to say, if your uh, if your goal is to beat the traffic, we're getting we're getting close to that time. Okay. Um, the uh, did you want to 
finish what you were saying there uh, with, with uh, well, I, your program? Is I really want to know about, about the, uh, the, the quick uh, – you're saying that you can get – progress people quickly. Mm-hmm. And so do you have a – do you have a, like a simple strategy that, uh, that you use that you think that's not being used where well, you can progress people quickly? Well, it, it kind of depends on the position. My, my philosophy is that each position has a central path. Each position has a best way to attack and defend from, I believe. If you look at probability um, and consistency, I, I believe that there is a best way to fight from each position. Does it change I, at all depending on body type? Nope. Hmm. The mechanics are the mechanics. It doesn't It doesn't. doesn't that's really true. matter. Yeah, that's true. Um, the step-by-step is still the step-by-step. Now, the only thing with me is like, the, of course, I can't win every single second of every single round all the time there of course i'm going to lose that battle here and there but i understand that just because i've lost that battle that doesn't mean that that's not the battle i should be fighting Mm -hmm. right yeah um just because you're failing at a particular battle doesn't mean that that's wrong it just means that you have to adapt and 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 fix the battle but a lot of people just change the battle altogether to maybe another battle that has less probability no i i'm like i jackhammer i i call it relentless persistence you get it out, I put it back in. You get it out, I put it back in. You get it out, I put it back in. And by doing that, by doing that over and over, <laughs> what, what I'm doing is I'm subconsciously training you to accept. Uh-huh. You have double, both butterfly hooks and I get rid of one. You put it back in, I clear one. You put mm-hmm. it back in, I clear one. Eventually what happens is you stop putting it back in. Right, right. Great, like, now I'm it's split. Of, so this obviously works point. in lovemaking too. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Um, but, but, I believe just on logic, Mm -hmm. for example, if I take your back, is it better if I trap your arm or I do not trap your arm? Is it better to trap trap the arm? Of course. Better for you if you trap Trap my arm. Yes. Right. Is that disputable? No. No. That's a universal truth. I call that a universal truth. Right. So if I put your hand behind your back, does that make things better or worse for me? Better. Better for you. So now what? So then the question becomes how many different ways can I get your hand behind your back? Nick, how many different ways? So <laughs> 30. Nick yeah. said so many, he can't count. Too many. <laughs> case, so case so, so what I do is I consider the hand behind the back an, an OFP, an optimized finishing position. Oh, like that acronym. Right? So, so my goal is to always get to OFPs. I, we've already, there, there's, no, there's no discussion that an OFP is better than a standard position, yes? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what's an OFP for mount? Head and arm. Mm-hmm. And an arm. What's in yeah. the, what, what's in what's How about in, the lock behind the butt? Like they get the from mount. If you get the the lock your your feet we have to the go. Butt. We have to go somewhere. Where are we leading them to? See, I, the reason I think that the head and arm is is an OF. The reason that that I think that the head and arm <laughs> is an, is an, is an OFP is because it doesn't take a whole lot of effort for us to hold it, and the yeah. experience that the guy is is having underneath you is very intense it's a bad one it's a bad experience <laughs> so the longer i can keep you in the head and arm the more your mind starts to shift from from um from standard to reactive mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. panic mm-hmm. so i and Outside i know that the realm of what you're going through in your mind and what i'm going through in my mind are two completely different experiences all i do is make your experience be far harder and labor intensive than mine yeah if i allow time to pass you will always be tired. That's a universal truth. There, there's no sure. question about that. Every energy Heart exchange, rate. every energy exchange, I want it to be as efficient for me as possible and as inefficient for you as possible. Mm. So it, this seems like uh, it's a little bit of the difference between being technical and being tactical. It's because both. like you, yeah, it's definitely, there. there's technique to it, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's like a sea of te- techniques out there, but then where the tactics come in is like, okay, well, like which, which fight are we going to fight? You know what I mean? I choose those fights. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. And what are the most important fights to have? The hands. The hand fight. And yeah. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. So when you design an entire, an entire system based on hand control, all of the leaves, all of those options mm. are illusions. They're mm-hmm. not even possible. You might think they're possible, but because you don't have access to what is the root controlling mechanism, which are the hands, they are no longer available. 
Right. So I'm limiting the scope of what you can actually do. Notice that you put me in the garden and I brought your knees together. I know that your knees together mm. are far less effective for you than your knees apart. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Universal truth. So do I want your knees together or do I want your knees apart? Together. When? Always. Always. <laughs> nice. you see what, do you see what I'm saying? So I'm not. You feel so good because I answered the right group. Yeah, right because, because if I got them now, wrong, I would feel. Terrible. Now, am I teaching you moves? What moves have I taught no, you? No, you're teaching me universal truths. Universal First truths principles. are far more important than than moves. Yeah. Yeah. How do you how do you in a, structure a class where your students can practice these things? The class classes are are built. Um, the meat grinder. That's what he's showing us right now. <laughs> What is the meat grinder? Let's talk about it. That's side mount. We covered this. Side mount top. Oh. The, si the, the side mount top, the turtle transition, the meat grinder. Mm -hmm. And then from mount to back mount is the mount is the is the mount grinder. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so so what when uh when you teach a class, do you teach uh warm up, three moves and roll? Like like, no, what we're working on each week is a particular perspective. So we take the central path in each particular perspective and we go through the basics of the, I walk you through the basics. So side mount bottom, it's all about four configurations. The framing of the neck, the clearing the arm off the neck, or the digging the, of the under. Those are your mm -hmm. three options from side mount. Mm -hmm. So from, But from, when you say swimming the arm off the neck, what do you mean? Trimming their arm it, off of your neck? The like number, the, cross the number, okay, so side mount is made up of two tethers. The underhook on the far side arm and the neck hug. Those are two tethers. Okay. You can release one of the tethers and then attack with that arm, but one tether always has to remain attached because if not, then you start floating off. The guy starts being able to push you far away, in, in, enough away that your knee starts coming across and now distance has been filled. Right, right. Right? So... So, um, um, lost my train of thought. We, we were talking about, you were saying there was three, three paths and I was just clarifying what you meant by swimming the arm off the neck. So you're so saying swimming the arm clearing off, the cross face. Yeah. So, so like getting the inside position to block that arm around the your arm head. around the neck is what's keeping you inside mount. Mm -hmm. That is what is most problematic for people to deal with is the arm around the neck. If the arm yeah. is not around, is not on the neck. It's not that tough to get out of side mount because now you're able to turn. What's the, the, the arm limits your ability for your shoulders to turn. Right. So there's a bunch of different ways to get the arm off the neck. I can make you let go of the arm off my neck. But if you don't understand the importance of the arm on the neck, people just grab it and let it go. But when you let go of my neck, you're never going to see that arm back on my neck again. I just, mm -hmm. I have, I'm really good at keeping it off my neck. So I'm fighting from from configurations that's the way i look at it i'm not looking at moves i'm looking at i'm fighting from configurations from the top perspective and side mount what am i trying to do lazy boy the far side arm trap isolate the far side arm and staple the near side arm why not because i can just punch you in the head whenever i want yeah, so that. what start so it starts <laughs> happening <laughs> you did bad take that. so take it, that. so it take start, that so it head. starts happening is it starts to generate a turning behavior so you go from side mount to quarter side mount. So quarter side mounts People when they don't start talk about that much either, do they? Almost they never. They will quarter just side turn, the, just that that uh, people would call that a scramble in no, most cases. But that's it's controlled. Like a, yeah, it should be controlled. So you go from side mount to quarter side mount. Now there's quarter side mount front, and then there's quarter side mount rear. So either the person is facing away from you, and your chest is on their shoulder, or they're facing into you, and now they're more on their side. Now quarter side mount front has two positions. You have the arm in front, or the arm is isolated. If the arm is isolated, you can just roll him back to his back. If the arm transfers to the front, now when the hands are together, we want to cross them. Mm -hmm. Why? Did you feel me crossing your arms ever? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Did it feel yeah. like easy to move and turn, or did it feel like super hard? That's where you're weak. Yeah, it's a bunch right. of trouble. That's where you're weak. Yeah, a bunch yeah. of trouble. Like straight so, jacket. Yeah. Yep. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm putting you in these positions and saying, "Move." And which way are you going to move? You have to turn away. Turn yeah, isn't that what back. I want you to do? So now I am motivating you to do what I want you to do. And go to the rear. I like the rear. <laughs> Nick knows what I'm talking about over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's like, I should have stayed home. <laughs> I like having you here, Nick. I, I hope you join again just so we can talk to you off mic. Um, <laughs> Can't even right, defend well, yourself. Uh, Sorry, but <laughs> it's uh, two thirty, and I, I know from personal experience, if you're going to try to drive through Temecula any later than this, Ooh, it's yeah, going to get rough. This was awesome. This yeah. was incredible. It was so much fun. Thank so you. How, how Thank can you uh, if people want to check out more of this and learn from you, and what are the 
JV Jiu Jitsu Online. I have an academy in Rancho Cucamonga. Um, yeah. They can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram has gotten a little bit popular there. Um, cool. JV Jiu Jitsu at JV Jiu Jitsu. But um, JV, JV Jiu Jitsu Online, we're putting everything up online. Um, I've been teaching seminars, which are basically chapter introductions, um, kind of laying out the, the, the central path in each chapter. Um, there's, uh, we're finishing up our subscription library, which has like 800 videos. Um, then, then when the central <laughs> really? paths, oh yeah, we, I've got, I've got so much content, so much content wow, that's cool, going to change man. everything. You that's know? Awesome. So everything now what I'm doing is I'm going through the artwork and just kind of pre- doing the presentations to simplify the complexity. Okay. I think, I think when it's broken down and you see it in front it of you, digestible. it makes it more digestible. And then you can see, and then these lectures, if you listen to them two, three times, it slowly starts to shift your focus away from the moves and start to shift it into configuration theory. Nice. Well, we don't have uh, a ton of subscribers yet, but uh, our 650 people that listened to the last one or whatever, uh, we're going to put your posts, put your links in the, the show notes and, and everything. Yeah, we appreciate cool you coming doing. all the way out here and, and oh, training awesome. with us and yeah. talking with us. It was fun. Yeah, yeah it was a lot of fun. Day. Professor, thank, thank you guys for having me. Dirty Nick, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for everybody that's uh, uh, listening, there's a there's another Nick in the room. Oh. I, I'm, I'm not Dirty Nick. <laughs> oh, we have to find a distinguishing character. Yeah, sweaty. Sweaty. Apparently, we were with Dirty Nick. Sure. I am Sweaty Nick for sure. Okay. Thank you all yeah, for this, listening. This has been awesome. Uh, yeah, please, guys, like and subscribe. Drop kick that bell. Donkey punch the bell. To make sure you get the new stuff. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're just super happy to keep this up. And we got a lot of good feedback from Grace University. A lot of the, the uh, participants were like, oh, dang, we were, wa- we're listening to the Boss Rolls podcast. That's oh, really? All, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I said. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> shit, all right. We're, we're doing something that's fun. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's our goal is to uh, – it, it's so much fun to roll. And, and it makes a lot of sense now. I like – I mean, I knew we had a good idea, but it makes a lot of sense to roll first. And then we can chat about stuff, and, and it just makes. Yeah, that was uh, cool to talk about certain things where it was, and it was like triggering memories. From yeah, like, oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, right afterwards. Yeah, yeah. It's it's by sure. design, it's, it, the biggest thing is everything I do is by design, and maybe it's not going to be everybody every single time, but I think that it beats the vast majority of people the vast majority of the time. So I think that that's a great starting point of information to 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 push out to the beginners. It's got to be I mean, simple, and it's got to be. Um, effective over you know the vast majority of individuals. That's all. That's all you can uh, ask, right? Anybody that tells you they can show you how to beat everybody every time, they're lying to you. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. There's probability. There's definitely better choices than others. Right. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's tough to win every second of every round. Right. 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 Well, your your uh, experience and your thoughtfulness behind this are very evident. So uh, I, I think people would do really well to, to learn more from you. So yeah. we'll, we'll definitely Thank point them in that direction. All right, guys. Yeah, Thanks for listening. Till next time. Here we go. Peace.